Hi everyone, a massive welcome to today's Altcoin Bible. I always love these episodes where we dive into three cryptos that look interesting uh, for different reasons. So we always look at a cherry ripe, a danger zone and a wonder watch. And I'll provide a little bit more context around some of those um, which are showing those sort of characteristics. And uh, sometimes you need to take a bit of a more zoomed out approach when looking at these cryptos because right now what's happening is Ethereum is looking a little bit weak. Uh, as Bitcoin starts to retest its 200 weekly moving average. So the top, uh, the most highly liquid two cryptos in the market, Bitcoin and Ethereum, are coming back to retest a critical support. Uh, and right now it's putting a, a tremendous amount of stress on a lot of these altcoins. So let's dive into that um, because I just want to show you on the charts of what I mean there. So Ethereum for the last few weeks has been leading the altcoin market and it often does that during uh, more bullish phases. So Ethereum will have a bit of a run, then a lot of that capital and liquidity will move from Ethereum then into altcoins, which are the medium and lower caps and they start moving higher and they've done that. Um, but now across the board, a lot of these altcoins after a, a nice little rally off the bottom are starting to look a little bit weak and it all leads from the top, which is Ethereum and ETH is weakening. So Ethereum had a great run off this low, uh, so that's 74%, but off the true low there that we had uh, at the midpoint of June, we're up about 100%. So that's a fairly significant move for Ethereum. And now we've run into this key technical resistance, and we're down about 11%. So that is significant there. But why this level here is so significant is because it was the floor for that last period before we had the capitulation all the way down to, was it $800? Uh, this area here, there's a lot of volume being traded up in this area. And so as we run back up into it, of course, it is going to be treated as resistance. A lot of sellers are going to re-engage up here, and we can see that we are beginning uh, to pull back to some uh, some shorter term moving averages. So the 21 moving average, which is this blue line here, is often a good indicator when a market is in an uptrend, uh, it will begin to bounce off it. It will go up and then it will come back to retest that level. And if it holds, the next move up will, will follow up like a staircase. But if it breaks, then we have to go down and, and really test out some lower technical levels. Uh, but right now, I've just overlaid the Fibonacci retracement, which is basically just a, a bunch of um, mathematical levels, which markets tend to adhere to over and over again in uptrends. So very, very important. And if I just move that over, uh, it looks like Ethereum wants to come back and retest the 0 0.5, 0 0.618, which would be confluent with that 21 moving average. So as long as Ethereum is doing this, a lot of the old coins are going to bleed out. A lot of the capital is going to be, well, people are going to be taking profits and going to be moving back into Bitcoin, Ethereum and stable coins. So just keep that in mind. Until Ethereum does find a little bit of a flaw here, a lot of these old coins are going to be in a bit of strife. And that's when I'll lead on to my danger zone. And Bitcoin as well, uh, we can see here, actually, just one more point on Ethereum. You can just see the bullish momentum is just trailing off. Um, so we ran into that resistance up here. Couldn't crack into that power zone at around 70 on the RSI. Uh, this is just an indicator of uh, buying and selling momentum. And right now, the buyers are beginning to trail off. Probably don't want to lose about the 54 level. Um, and that would be confluent with the 21 there falling down. Uh, Bitcoin as well. When I said that Bitcoin is testing or retesting a key contextual level, it could not be understated. The 200 weekly moving average, we've been talking about it for absolute weeks. Bitcoin is, uh, well, closed above it, which is a hugely uh, bullish move off the bottom. Uh, but now what we're doing, we're, we've opened over here. We're still on top of the red line, um, thankfully. But now we're fully retesting it for support. We need to hold it. If we do not hold it and we go lower, altcoins are going to absolutely nuke and the market's going to be probably retesting some of these lows down here uh, because we were in this, this nice range. Now we've broken out of it. And now we're just retesting that 200. If we find it as support, we get over to Monday when this candle does close and that gets solidified as that support, then we should be golden for a move higher. But this is just a, a technical pullback, a, a phase of the market where we need to really find out if we're ready to go um, in terms of finding that, that bottom in the short term uh, or uh, it was a bit of a full storm. And we're going to break back down. We're going to retest some of these lows, go back to 20, 21,000. So uh, just keep that in mind. The forces of the market are really led from the top Bitcoin and Ethereum as we move into our altcoins. All right, so let's get into our altcoin Bible. And my danger zone for this week is Avalanche, AVAX. And I'll just have to bring up the chart again. Uh, but like many altcoins, it's looking uh, rather weak. And I'll bring that up again. AVAX, there we go. 
So it's like, like again, a lot, of, a lot of these altcoins, it's looking weak. So it's it's almost got these two little tops here. You've got the left, uh, you could you could almost say it's the head and shoulders developing, sure. Uh, maybe a left shoulder there, a head here, and a right shoulder. Uh, but just if we're looking at this visually, uh, it doesn't look too flash because this high here, we actually made a lower high over here. We also saw momentum trailing off on the RSI. It has actually broken this uptrend that it was following. So there's a low here, it's a higher low, and now we've broken through it. This could bounce here and go higher, sure, but it just feels unlikely with Ethereum and Bitcoin doing its thing. Uh, the 21, the blue line there got broken, and now the daily candle is underneath, uh, and it looks like it should be falling down to about the $20 mark. Uh, if not a bit lower, to test out this trend, which would be the, the higher low trend. So there's a low here, there's a higher low there, and then we go up here. But uh, this does look like the positive trend is just starting to wane and weaken. Um, the higher lows and then the higher highs, you can see there's a high there, and this higher is higher than the last, and then we had a higher low. That's a bit of a signal that we're going down to retest some of these areas. We also have a big gap of volume here now, we're beneath it. So this should drop down to about that 50 moving average uh, and also about this level on that trend line. So uh, AVAX, absolutely my danger zone for this week, but absolutely mirrors a lot of other cryptos. Some are holding up better than others. And uh, namely my, um, look, I'm gonna actually throw out there that this one is my cherry ripe. It's been a little bit difficult to find a crypto that looks really, really nice uh, in this environment. So that's why I wanted to give you the preamble at the beginning showing you why things may look as they do because across the board, we're seeing that weakness um, and it's very difficult to say this one looks fantastic and it's going to go higher when everything's feeling the squeeze. So one that I wanted to show you though was Binance Coin. So Binance Coin uh, is effectively... Uh, used as if if you're holding it, it's like equity in Binance, the exchange. So when the Binance coin is really pumping, it gives you a really good indicator that retail or traders are really active in this market because Binance is the most highly used exchange, the highest liquid exchange, got the most coins. And the Binance coin, if you're holding it, gives you a discount for buyers and sellers. So uh, that just... It's very logical that if the Binance coin is growing in value, then there's demand for it. Binance coin is also used for the Binance smart chain. So that's their own blockchain where there's metaverses and different cryptos being built on that as well. So it just shows you that retail is very hungry and thirsty for an F alternative, which is cheaper and more scalable. So that's what I, I look for as well in a, a really healthy market that's recovering. And Binance has looked really good for a little while. You can see this very positive trend, this staircase that's just moving higher, uh, higher highs and uh, many, many higher lows. So really, really, really nice looking chart. And what it's doing here, which is different from most of its counterparts, is the, the, the retrace here is rather shallow and it looks quite nice that it's setting up for this pullback here to the Fibonacci uh, 0.5. It's really being bought up at this level. Uh, and this is absolutely key because this is a retest of this ceiling up here. So uh, this could be seen as a falling wedge into this pattern, which is generally a bullish formation uh, in an uptrend or a bull flag. And it's being squeezed into this little area uh, onto this line, which is that previous level. So obviously it doesn't want to lose this, but it's on top of key moving averages. It's still on top of the level. It's getting squeezed. I can absolutely see this uh, launch higher to maybe that 200 daily moving average at uh, 341. Uh, and this is uh, this uh, green line here is a hugely important level as well. If I expand that out and I'll just zoom in, uh, because like, um, like Bitcoin that we showed a bit earlier, <clears throat> this over here was the, the range that uh, Binance was stuck in before the capitulation down. So this will be a tremendous floor slash ceiling uh, when we run into it again. We're on top of that. We're coming back down to retest it. That is super, super important. It's what Ethereum hasn't done. It's what uh, AVAX couldn't do as well. It's now on top of it. So that is a hugely positive sign, but Binance coin has to follow through to move higher. Also, the RSI doesn't look too bad at all. It's just coming down to retest that, um, that moving average on the RSI. So uh, quite happy with how <clears throat> Binance looks there, but the Fibonacci retracements on these um, trending higher moves can be super, super useful to layer in find those entries, 0 0.5, 0 0.618, are generally a really good spot to move in in an uptrending market. So definitely one to watch, but I'd say it's my cherry right for this week. All right, uh, I want to show you VeChain because it is a very popular cryptocurrency and it's had a nice move uh, over the last week or so, which has been about 27%. 
hasn't really moved massively off the lows like a lot of altcoins. Uh, but I just wanted to illustrate what it's trying to do. It's coming back to retest this line here, similar to Binance, but Binance obviously looks a lot better. Um, it really wants to crack through the top of this range. This volume profile, as you can see here, needs to get on top of this and move higher. Why? Because it's the floor over here. It really wants to get on top. Uh, but I just want to advise a bit of caution here with VeChain. It is my one to watch because it has broken into this range. But importantly as well, uh, it's getting a lot of traction on Twitter that it has a partnership with Amazon uh, Web Service. Now, if you dive into it, I think it's a bit of smoke and mirrors like a lot of these partnership announcements are in bear markets. So just be very, very aware of that. But that doesn't mean it doesn't move the market. Um, uh, if it turns out to be true, VeChain will explode higher, probably up to that 200 moving average. But if this happened in a bull market and there was rumor of an Amazon partnership, you know, you'd see probably a 50 to 100% gain uh, over a couple of days. Um, the, the fact that it hasn't uh, is probably a good indicator that, um, that we're in a bear market, but 33% at, at its height. But I just wanted to, again, advise caution that <clears throat> a lot of these uh, events that you do see on Twitter or in socials, they'll get announced, price will run up. It's a very much like a buy the rumor, sell the news. A lot of traders, and so money already in the ecosystem are just looking for cheap money. They're looking for cheap gains. They see something flag on Twitter, they'll move into a long position uh, on Binance or a trading platform, buy the coin and just play that short term move. And then it will be heavily sold into as it begins to reach technical levels. Uh, and sellers will re-engage hard. And a lot of people, latecomers into the market, will get caught out as uh, you know news filters through that the partnership wasn't legit or it was, it was nonsense, or even simply uh, it's being faded, so which means it's being sold into because it is a bear market. People want to take their profits quickly. They're not prepared to let this run higher. Um, but it is, again, one to watch because it had that, that impulse higher. It looks better than a lot of other cryptos. It is above those moving averages. Uh, the RSI looks quite nice. Uh, if it can bounce here and punch through this level, you get very interested in VeChain. So absolutely one to watch, just, but just please be careful of the buy the room at sell the news. It happens all the time in this market uh, when there's no real fundamental reason for it to be moving. It is all hype and narrative. So you just have to be very, very careful, especially in bear markets with that. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed my take on BNB, VeChain and Avalanche. Uh, I hope you have a great day. We'll catch up for our Friday roundup towards the end of the week. Got to watch that 200 week moving average and also what Ethereum is doing. I think that's super, super important. So have a wonderful day. Ta, bye.